You're here because you want to do an in-depth scan data analysis for an engine that has an idle problem. Do the simple things first. Check the throttle linkage and cable for sticking or binding. And if they are sticking or binding, make the repair. Then connect your scan tool and select data stream. You want to select data that may affect engine idle. Make sure you use vehicle specific information. Throttle is a great indicator for idle conditions. The throttle position sensor signal should be within specifications. If the TPS voltage is higher than normal or lower than normal, check for the following conditions. Has the throttle been adjusted to correct for a vacuum leak or carbon buildup in the throttle bore? If they have, you need to find the vacuum leak and repair it. You need to clean the carbon out of the throttle bore and the rest of the engine and then adjust the throttle correctly. Then start the engine and allow it to warm up to a normal operating temperature. All oxygen sensors have to be working correctly for long-term fuel trim diagnostics. If you're going to use long-term fuel trim for diagnostics, you have to have good oxygen sensors. With any idle problem, check long-term fuel trim both banks if you have a V engine. Long-term fuel trim should be within plus or minus 5 percent. On vehicles with high mileage, it should be within plus or minus 10 percent. Readings with a minus sign in front of them indicate that the PCM is subtracting fuel to compensate for a rich condition. A rich condition is too much fuel or too little air. Readings without the minus sign indicate that the PCM is adding fuel to compensate for a lean condition. A lean condition, if you'll remember, is not enough fuel or too much air. When long-term fuel trim is higher than normal, you need to check for vacuum leaks. Vacuum leaks are a common cause of idle problems. When long-term fuel trim is over 10 and under 20 percent, you're going to be checking for a minor vacuum leak. And that is much more difficult than looking for a hole in the intake manifold. You're going to have to scrutinize your test results and find a minor vacuum leak. When long-term fuel trim is over 20 percent, it's having difficulty compensating for a lean condition. And this is causing the engine to run very rough. You must then find any vacuum leaks before continuing to diagnose any idle problems. So go to vacuum leak testing. When long-term fuel trim is subtracting fuel, it's compensating for a rich condition. Go to fuel injector or fuel pressure volume test. The IAC count should be between 10 and 24. It goes higher as the engine speed increases. IAC counts are higher than normal. With the throttle closed, the PCM is commanding the higher RPM. Check the engine load and temperature sensors to see if they're telling the PCM that there's a load condition or a temperature condition that the PCM has to increase RPM with. If you suspect that the IEC is sticking, go to IEC motor testing. Now look at the data. Our engine speed is 784. At the bottom, our desired speed is 1,000. And our IEC counts are 87. You would think at 87, we would have the desired idle speed. But it doesn't seem that we do. So you would go test the idle IEC motor to see if it's sticking or not. Here the PCM wants a higher idle speed based on its inputs. Desired idle speed is 1,000. Engine speed is 998. Those are good. But look at IAC. It's 87. Once again, you're going to have to go check the load sensors and who's reporting false information to the PCM. You also want to check the PSPS switch. That's the power steering pressure switch the park neutral switch, and the AC request switch. They should all indicate off. If the park neutral switch is on, make sure that the gear selector is fully in the park position, and then you're going to have to diagnose the park neutral switch and its circuits. If the power steering pressure switch state is on, make sure that you're not turning the steering wheel, and then you're going to have to diagnose the power steering pressure switch and its circuits. Once again, if the AC request switch state is on, Make sure that the AC isn't on and then, then diagnose the air conditioning switch and its circuits. Check other inputs. If the torque converter is on, it will most likely cause the engine to stall.
but in some rare cases we have seen it cause a rough idle. So make sure it's off. If the vehicle has a pulse width modulated torque converter clutch, look at the data bit. It should be zero at idle. If it indicates any command, it may cause rough idle without stalling the engine. Then you're going to go to Transmission Test in the main menu. When the IEC counts are lower than normal, with the throttle closed, the PCM is commanding the lower RPM. You're going to check for vacuum leaks that would raise engine RPM above the desired idle speed, causing the PCM to re react by closing the IEC to try to bring the RPM back down. So you're going to go to vacuum leak testing on other scan data. You're going to look at it, any data that may affect engine idle. It needs to be checked. One of the most important ones is engine temperature. It should match the actual temperature of the engine. If it doesn't, test the ECT sensor and its circuit. Current gear should correctly show the selected transmission range. Special note here, on most of these vehicles we test, three is the normal position for park or neutral. So when you look at current gear and it says three and you're in park and neutral, it's normal. If not, go to transmission testing in the main menu. ETR position should be within specifications. If it isn't, go to EGR testing. Do not forget to look at this data bit. Leaking EGR is a very common problem concerning idles. Vehicle speed should be at zero miles per hour at idle. If it isn't, diagnose the vehicle speed sensor and its circuits. System voltage must be within specifications for the charging system. When the charging system isn't charging correctly, it can cause any number of problems and a lot of idle problems. If the system voltage isn't within specifications, go to charging system test. When traction control is active, the PCM will selectively shut off fuel injectors causing an idle problem. The traction control should remain inactive at idle. If it isn't, you're going to have to diagnose the traction control system. Use vehicle specific information, scan data, this will help you find anything that's out of normal range. And these may be causing your idle problems. So use vehicle specific information and your scan data together to help find and fix those problems. You must fix those problems first. Remember that data like map voltage may not be correct because the engine's running poorly. You're going to have to decide is it the map causing the engine to run bad or the bad running engine causing the map be to be wrong? You can use a sensor simulator to dial in the correct map sensor. Now this is going to replace the map sensor signal. If the engine returns to normal idle, it was the map sensor at fault. Diagnose the map sensor and its signals. If the engine doesn't return to a normal idle with this clean sensor simulator signal, continue testing. A sensor simulator may be used to ensure that most sensor signals are correct and clean. It's a great tool. You should learn how to use it. 